to several times. And uh, it's great for me to come back to meet friends uh, here. And uh, even this time, we are not able to actually physically visit each city, which I really like to do. But it's also good to meet online. And uh, hopefully, my session can bring some useful information for you. So my topic is to how to leverage Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse for machine learning environment. So uh, yeah, just a, a short uh, introduction of myself. So I'm working for uh, Dell Technology. So specifically work for Dell EMC, which is a, is a, is a division of a tech technology. It's a big division. So, uh, so I'm currently titled as a distinguished engineer and I'm part of Oracle uh, Dell Technology Leadership Program, uh, which has about like uh, about 200, uh, like a uh, uh, pretty much good engineer. Uh, we what we do is provide a lot of uh, technical directions or advice for the, the management and the, and the top management and uh, yeah. So my specialty is uh, Oracle database and uh, Oracle eBusiness We Cloud. Uh, and the last two or three, two years, I've been uh, spending time researching the Oracle machine learning uh, inside Oracle database, which is uh, today's topic. So I also, as I mentioned, I uh, also a frequent speaker at um, several Oracle, many Oracle conference in the last 10 years. So as a matter of fact, I actually presented 185% session in the last 10 years. And a lot of us, uh, that included my two trip to uh, uh, Latin Americas. So I've been uh, uh, Guatemala and, uh, um, and uh, Panama City and uh, uh, Chile, uh, 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 Norway, Uruguay, Uruguay, and also the and, uh, uh, and Brazil. So it's been great to visit a lot of friends there. So. And the uh, important thing is uh, I do have my blog that actually has all my previous presentation. So this presentation will also be uh, low there. So, but if if a groundbreaker tool need a uh, my session, the presentation, I will share that too. So that's uh, without going further. So let me just jump into the topic. So today actually in 45, 45 minutes, um, we have a lot of things to cover, but uh, I, I try to c cover, uh, uh, touch several related pro uh, topics. One is, uh, Oracle Machine Learning Inside Database. So how we do, why we do Oracle Machine Inside Oracle Database. Uh, so, and what is the uh, technology available in, in, in this area? Then we'll specifically talk about uh, one type of database, which is Oracle Autonomous Data Warehouse. And, uh, and we're gonna show that uh, what is special for this uh, Autonomous Data Warehouse that can offer for Oracle Machine Learning uh, 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 topic. Then we're going to use one of the example to show the process, how we do machine learning inside of the autonomous data warehouse. So let's jump into the Oracle machine learning in database. So, so as we know, uh, many of us probably already know that uh, have some experience on data warehousing. Uh, so back old days, uh, we we not only have a transaction database, we also build a data model, a data warehouse, uh, by collecting all the historical data into this data model. Now, one of the reasons for that is that in addition to data archiving, we want to use those historical data to, to, to build a report, to understand what happened before. So for example, for company, we understand the last, year, last month's sales. Right? So that's good report. That's actually quite important. A lot of management the first day, you know, in the office, they want to know uh, what happened last year, last month. So that's very really important for them. But uh, if in case something happened in last month or something good thing happened like last month, something I found myself, myself is like a 30% more than previous month. What happened? What are good things contributed to those good results? We want to know for why. So this is a, we want to dig more. So the data, the data in their warehouse will show us. Uh, so so obviously we want to know why we want to continue those why. So those uh, are uh, pretty much for all the history. But uh, then immediate thing is uh, you know if 
they also want to plan what happened the next month, you know, what happened the next month's sales. That's actually important because a, a lot of sales, uh, if they can predict a lot of sales for next month, they also can predict the, how much they need to uh, the, the buy the, 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 the parts. They, they, they can talk to uh, the, the supply chain to, to, to get more inventory. So that's also quite important. So, the, so we suddenly moved to historic data to future data. And, uh, and, uh, and also next thing is uh, if we have a way to predict this result, we want to also have this uh, mechanism building the application. So, so then if you have a supply chain application, uh, we can certainly, uh, if, we, uh, if we have this way predict next month's sale, then the supply chain application can automatically uh, 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 send the, uh, the 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 number to to the supply and request more data more more parts so that's a kind of natural curve um, so that's why Oracle think uh, I, I think uh, which I also agree that the machine learning is actually a, a natural maturity of the analytical so all this uh, uh, you can see this and and and. and so, but how we want to do that? So many machine learning uh, 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 research they 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 they, they actually build a machine learning server. And uh, but uh, one of the big important characteristic of machine learning is that they actually have to be, use a larger set of data because uh, the machine learning really is use data to predict the future. The the more data, the more accurate data is uh, they can predict a better a better future or. or to learn, to, to, to help the machine, machine to learn. So, but uh, then you come up with like uh, how we deal with this data. If you have a huge set of data, if you have a separate machine learning server, then every time you build a model, you have to extract those data to the machine learning server, which takes a lot of time and uh, high performance and, and uh, require a lot of CPU or storage resource or networking resource. Why wouldn't, why wouldn't they just do machine learning inside database? In this way, we don't really have to extract data. So in this way, uh, 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 they save a lot of energy. So Oracle methodology is move the algorithm into a database instead of moving data to from database to machine learning server. So that's the that has been Oracle strategy. That's something we call an in database machine learning. So all the machine learning algorithm processing is happening inside of Oracle database. And also next thing is. Uh, a lot of Oracle database itself is actually very, uh, is sitting on very high, high powerful uh, uh, machine. They are capable to do the, the algorithm uh, process. So as a matter of fact, uh, Oracle already done this a long time ago. They, they, uh, uh, they actually had some building data mining procedure. Those are mining procedure, data mining procedure are, are, are designed to do this type of machine learning, uh, machine learning capability. So in, in Oracle 20C, they actually include this called uh, Oracle Advanced Analytical that include all the machine learning pro procedure and, and, and become the one option of Oracle RTBMS database. So in today 12C, if you just install 12C, uh, and that feature is there. But uh, yeah, you, for, for sales point of view, you probably need to turn on that option. But, uh, but uh, function, all functionality is there. We're talking about all the PLC procedure. This is a database. Whether or not you, you, you know or not, is the fact is there. So if you go to Oracle database, type describe DBMS data mining, you will see that procedure. And you can call that procedure. So it's already there. You will not real, realize that. And another thing is uh, not only you can have a procedure, uh, one of the benefits is a lot of uh, Machine learning process actually can be implemented inside a SQL statement. So in this case, it's a machine. If you have to write a, write a uh, R or you have to write a Python, you have to write a lot of uh, uh, the code for that. But this case is simply think one SQL statement can apply the model. So that's just an example. We're gonna dig more. If you don't uh, get a hundred percent understanding here, that's fine. We we can we explain more. So that's why the machine learning uh, is built inside database. They also not only help us to avoid the data extraction, they also, Oracle RDBMS itself is a very strong 
uh, engine, and they can do a lot of uh, very good thing, including the parallelism. So we all know that we run parallel query. The Oracle is very strong in parallelism, and if you have a very good number of CPU, you can they can take advantage of those uh, uh, multi-core CPU, so make it very fast. And uh, and uh, another important thing is uh, all the Oracle machine learning. Uh, all the, uh, they actually can leverage the, the, the single data structure, which is table. So you can store the, all the data, all the all result, even the model, machine learning model itself, inside the table. So that, that's how they, everything is based on SQL. So in this case, uh, the model itself, NY class Y model, that model itself is a table. So that's why, because the table, you can run this in select statement. So you can pass this table in this text statement. So Oracle ex extended the SQL syntax to have something like this to do the machine learning. So yeah, so inside that, and, uh, and uh, Oracle actually uh, inc almost included all the major machine learning algorithms inside Oracle database, including those most common ones, kind of regression, classification, time series, all the you know, most common ones already in there. And Oracle are in the process to include uh, uh, the, 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 the R or Python uh, that can directly support by uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, direct talk to Oracle, the, the, the machine learning procedure inside Oracle database. So that's, that's how the Oracle direction. Okay, so I just want to give a brief. So for those people who would like to know more, you, you can research Oracle Advanced Analytical uh, package that that actually has a lot of many details uh, to go through each procedure, each step. You can learn more. So now we switch the topic to to look at the specifically how this can be done in the Oracle Autonomous Database. Obviously, everything I talked before, you actually can implement inside of uh, any regular database, which could be in your laptop or could be your data center. But now let's see what is uh, actual. Uh, extra feature that Oracle that uh, autonomous database can offer. Let's get a little bit of uh, introduction about uh, autonomous database. So autonomous database is built on Oracle Cloud. So which means you can leverage a lot of uh, easy uh, uh, provisioning mechanism. And also, uh, so the, all the database is running on cloud and which means that they also have an autonomous feature that they can do the, all the patching, all the upgrade, and all the monitoring, so you don't have to worry about all the DBA tasks, everything's taken care of for you. Only thing you need is uh, use that to do your development. So simply DBA task is pretty much done by on background by Oracle Autom or the Autonomous Database um, Engine itself. But uh, as a developer, you can focus on the, 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 the development. So so by different workload, you uh, Autonomous Database support uh, um, transaction database or all the their warehouse database. But for this presentation, I focus on ADW, which is their warehouse. But actually transaction database also support machine learning. If you want to explore that, that also apply too. So you can do that too. So autonomous database itself, is not just a database. It actually provides the, 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 the very collective architecture. So if you, if you see the, 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 the big diagram, um, in the center, so this is actually the autonomous database. So it, it has a, not only has a database, which is a regular 18 or 19 C, uh, on, uh, in the future they're gonna upgrade to 20 C. So, so this is an autonomous base plus some of our autonomous, autonomous manager features. But uh, for application point of view, uh, the nice thing is that they actually include some of the building uh, development tool, such as uh, uh, developer, uh, REST API or Application Express. But today we want to focus on this machine learning, because machine learning, Oracle machine learning for notebook. That is a tool that you actually can uh, use to do your machine learning task. Uh, and that tool is actually pre-built built inside our autonomous database. So, but obviously as a whole, you actually can uh, use your client tool in your data center to, you know, for example, if you want to run developer in your laptop, uh, you could use laptop, the uh, laptop, uh, the developer, SQL developer in laptop point to the autonomous database, which is fine. But you also can run BI2 on top of that. So yeah, easy way is fine. So 
Yeah, so the I want to quickly go through this. So if you want to try this, uh, you can just go to Oracle Online, uh, the, uh, Oracle Cloud to request a free try. So free try, $300, free credit for up to 30, 30 days. Whichever finish, your free trial will end. But what happened to free trial uh, after free trial end? You have two options, either you pay, or if you don't want to pay, let's say if you are just for a learning purpose, uh, and uh, I'm not gonna run enterprise uh, application, you can stay with, uh, uh, without doing anything, they will automatically become the always free, which means uh, you don't have to pay, the database will run forever. But they do have a limitation, like uh, they only can have two database instance, each instance only can have one CPU, eight gig memory. Uh, but nice thing about this is that the important features like Oracle machine learning feature is part of it. Free, always free, which I'm doing now. So, so all the all the example I'm running was actually based on always free try. So you don't have to uh, uh, buy, you know. So if just for learning purpose, yeah. So so in order to use the Oracle machine learning, you have to provision ADW instance first, and that's actually quite simple. You go log into a machine. Once you get a free account, you log into some uh, uh, this main page. Click uh, autonomous warehouse and uh, answer a few questions, like uh, uh, you know how much CPU you want it, and uh, and uh, and it, it, uh, it will automatically get your instance. So once you get an instance, you can do from, go from there to get a machine learning uh, account. So let's see, talk talk more. So we just uh, just went through that. Uh, let's see how Oracle machine learning in with AWS works. So machine learning itself. Is actually building tool inside of autonomous database, which we just discussed, that allow you to run notebook. This is actually the machine learning itself include a notebook that's based on Zeppelin notebook. Inside notebook, you actually can run SQL or run SQL query or run SQL PL SQL procedure, and you also can. The important thing is they also provide you a lot of a GUI interface for you to actually look at data in different way, which you're going to discuss more. So all the, the, the data mining procedure can be run, executed in this data or machine learning notebook. So, and also all those important algorithm is in, in, included inside of Oracle machine learning. Yeah, so the, so you can see the most common use the machine learning algorithm as, such as the classification, clustering, uh, clustering uh, anomaly detection, time series, regression. So almost all you can use that. And uh, and uh, we uh, we're gonna actually pick up one of the example later on. And. Uh, now Oracle I actually talked to Oracle uh, uh, Oracle developer uh, sometime. Uh, they actually mentioned uh, in the Oracle Twenty C, they they are adding more uh, uh, more features. And so actually, this is the area Oracle actively develop new features, and uh, and uh, those are the 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 this feature allow a lot of uh, uh, developer like a data scientist who does who does not does not have a lot of a programming background. So a lot of data science that they know data very well, they know algorithm very well. They may not know a lot of technical details such as uh, uh, and, uh, and, uh, how the database is uh, running in background and how even they may not know the SQL quite well. Uh, and, uh, and also uh, they may not know the, the Python or, 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 the, or the other language very well, but they can, uh, so this all this new feature that Oracle is going to develop is it actually help them to focus on their business logic instead of get so much detailed technical part. So this is actually, uh, yeah. And uh, one area is, uh, uh, they also know one area is, uh, uh, you know that um, a lot of people uh, today, you know, we have a, a Oracle, uh, uh, OML has a lot of function to support SQL, but uh, for some people, like data scientists, some people, some some data scientists may know may know Python R uh, in in their background, so they may not know SQL that well. So this 
this new feature allowed them to use Python or R directly access database. Uh, so they can come but uh, they can choose between SQL or, or the R. So they also can do the REST API. And uh, another important feature is to monitor the, the model performance. So as we know that uh, the, the, the machine learning model is based on data. So, so if, let's say if we build a data model like uh, three months ago, and that data model is based on three months data. What happens if you have new data coming in and uh, that data may be different from old data. So you need to have some adjustment. So including rebuilding the model, but, uh, but, uh, but uh, it would be nice to actually have someone to tell you that you need to rebuild the model. So Oracle, this 20C has this new feature to monitor the, the, the model performance that they will let you know that it's time to rebuild the data, recommend you to rebuild data. So, and the uh, other important area is called auto, auto ML. So, so the sum of the, uh, uh, this actually uh, build a path for us to automate, automate the entire, entire uh, machine learning uh, uh, model process. So for example, the uh, model selection. So, so, so sometimes you have data uh, and you have task. Uh, you need to know which model you're gonna use. We discussed previously, we have so many different models, which one you use? That's a big question. So all the ML, well, uh, based on the data, actually help you to select what's the best model to, 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 to use to, for, to, for, the, uh, for, for, for model training. And another thing is called a feature selection. So normally, um, uh, Oracle machine, uh, machine learning is based on data. And, and importance is based on certain features. So for example, the, the one we're gonna discuss is, in the example is we wanna build a model to predict the customer credit. So in order for us to predict, predict customer credit, customer has many inform attributes, such as the one table will show they have 40, 40 attributes, such as like income, and also the profession and the family status. And now they may also include some of uh, uh, features such as address, city, so you can tell like some features more important like uh, income, family status, and the profession, and uh, and uh, how much money in the bank and the uh, wealth. So 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 the so you ought to be able to select automatically select those important features. So the uh, the the new feature automatically to help you to to quickly identify those most important uh, features uh, for your. To, for your model building, so but uh, uh, and, and this will uh, uh, reduce a lot of uh, manual effort because uh, uh, if you have a, a, a table that has a hundred thousand or maybe a million row, it's impossible for human being to look at those uh, value. So the, it's good, you know, if you have an automation process to identify that, and also uh, the auto tune process or uh, uh, hyper parameter, they also uh, can automatically tune your model, uh, model, model prediction accuracy. So uh, that to, for you to get um, uh, avoid a lot of manual process. So those are the new features on the pipeline, and, uh, and uh, that will be implemented in the, in the 20C. So those uh, let's let's jump directly onto how to how to do this. So we discuss uh, you. Uh, in order for you to use uh, Oracle machine learning, you have the first provision the uh, automatic, uh, uh, the autonomous stable warehouse instance. Yeah, once you have instance, then uh, uh, next step is uh, uh, create a user that you actually can use Oracle machine learning notebook. So the the way the design is, uh, uh, any user that in autom uh, in autonomous database that has uh, uh, OML a uh, role, a uh, privilege, that that user can access Oracle machine learning uh, 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 environment. So that's the role. So the way you do that is you come to ADW, uh, this database instance, you come to uh, the, the uh, this select is called manager Oracle machine learning user. So when you click that, you will create a new user. Uh, you specify, uh, once you create a new user and that, uh, Automatically, if you click this window, uh, this tab, 
uh, uh, if you go through here to create user, that user automatically has the the, the, the developer role uh, uh, role for you to access the Oracle machine learning. Uh, but uh, if you let's say if you already have an existing user which you created use C plus, for example, you created like a John user, and that user was created from C uh, plus, not from here, then you you actually can grant them user. So so and uh, yeah so so either way you uh, you you uh, any user who need access to machine learning need have this uh, the developer role. Role for that, yeah. So once you have that user, uh, then let's see. In this case, I create a user user called adwc underscore ws. So I create that user and in that database, then I can just use that user to to access. This is a part of a this GUI interface is a part of for uh, 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 inside of uh, uh, inside of uh, uh, yeah. If you call uh, uh, server console, you, you actually they give you once you once you click the server console, they actually open a little tab uh, that that actually show you the actually URL. So you can get a URL, uh, which is the Oracle machine learning URL. That URL is tied to this uh, your your actual autonomous database instance. So look at it. OML is always default connect to the your autonomous database. That 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 bond is already there. So you know, I'm actually in my book. I actually explain them. I have detail to actually show how these two are bonding together. It's a quite, actually quite important to understand that because uh, once you have Oracle machine learning, that like this case like uh, once you log in, if I click running SQL, this was open a, a notebook for us to write a SQL. Then when you write a SQL, you have to solve two different important uh, uh, question. One is uh, where the SQL will be executed, and where the, if the SQL is select statement, where the SQL will get the data. Those two important questions is related to your autonomous database. First one is your SQL statement. As we know, if we run SQL statement, the SQL statement has to be uh, interpreted, executed by interpreter. So the 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 this interpreter is actually inside the Oracle database. So that's why your machine learning notebook has to have called interpret the setting, bounding setting, that the setting actually point to your ADW database. So anytime you, you type SQL, you want to execute a SQL, that SQL is actually sent into your database to interpret to execute. The ones is executed, if the SQL statement is a select statement, they also uh, uh, go to database to fetch data. When they fetch the data, they're going to actually, after they fetch the data, data will be Present into the notebook, which we're going to show later on. So this is actually the, the, the main page, home, the machine learning main page. Once you log in, so click here, you can run a SQL statement as we just discussed. Uh, but if you run, if you want to run multiple SQL statement, or if you want a pure SQL package, which we discuss, like we run a DBMS data mining procedure, you have to run from here. And uh, either of this actually are the special case of a notebook. So you also can click, say, notebook. You can create a notebook, and then in the notebook you can just put a, a dollar uh, the SQL sign that's for running SQL and a SQL script sign to run SQL script, which we're going to discuss more later. On. Yeah. So another thing is uh, uh, important thing is uh, uh, the, when you click example, they actually show you all the example uh, as a as a, as a first time uh, the the learner is actually strong advice you come here, uh, click this example. This example open all the, the pre-built notebook. So you can start from my first notebook. This is just like a hello world if you're running any programming language. Anytime you run any program language, you first write first, first program is a hello world. This is just like a hello world for us, for you to get a notebook. But you, when you get it more comfortable, you can try more, more machine learning uh, uh, example. This actually show you the how do you you do that. So now later I'm going to show you one example. Uh, uh, the, the example is not from here, but it's one of the example a little bit more complicated than this one. But I want to uh, use that to to show the different phase of 
uh, machine learning. So, so here is a, if you click a SQL, like see, if I click a running SQL here, click this this one, I will get this uh, uh, SQL query script. So I so this just uh, simply that is just like a SQL developer, you just uh, type SQL any SQL. Obviously, this goes a little bit more complicated, but if you can, if you want, you can just run sing, like select star from customer. That's a single single query. And uh, a nice thing about this is uh, uh, if you try that, uh, uh, all this example actually use the table that is already pre-built in the in the ADW instance. So you don't have to reload any table. So so uh, this one is same. So so the, the just like sample schema. So ADW provide a sample schema for you to do the machine learning. And and this this also all of this uh, all of this actually give you sample code. To run this and the same schema for you to learn this piece. So uh, what I want to mention is, uh, uh, so you you run a SQL here, and uh, you you run uh, you actually click this this is already finished. But if you have not done that, this should be ready. Uh, they actually change that. So when initially when you write, finish SQL, this is actually show ready. Then you click this uh, uh, the triangle, uh, ask them to execute this query. As we mentioned that this uh, this notebook is actually connect to your background ADW database instance. So this query is will be executed inside a ADW instance to fetch data. By default, the data, the all the fetch data will be shown here as a table format. So so that's why this come in. So this actually allow you to actually change, uh, uh, look at the data in different way. By default, this table. So you, if you don't click here, it's right here. But all the same data, look here, by clicking each of this, uh, each of this one, they also show you uh, the uh, presented data in different graphical way. So for example, if I click pi, then our same query, you know, I run the same query, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, they were gonna show you the distribution uh, by, by, for example, if I, in this case, it's by profession. So you can see different profession. There is a profession column. Uh, they actually look at it. the occupation column. It's actually occupation column. Uh, and, uh, by setting, I didn't show here, but by go to setting, you can actually can select which one you want. Uh, by setting, there's a call X row, X, the key. So you can select this column called occupation column. Then they're gonna distribute the data by by this occupation, so you have a uh, you know different pie like uh, how you will see how many people, uh, how many in this case how many people, how many customer are in, in in different profession like a worker or farmer, a technician. So this is the one way to look at data distribution. It is important that in the Oracle machine learning, uh, especially in the data preparation uh, 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 phase you have to look at the data a different way. This is actually very commonly used by data scientists to understand the data. This is another way, if you wanna look at a different way, uh, you know, I can select it, in this case, key. So I can select it in, uh, by selecting this color, uh, 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 bar, this, this histogram. So if I wanna show this one by the, the job, uh, uh, different job content, different job, Type, then this show like uh, uh, how many people like 180 or three people are in health, and and this like uh, 90 people in design category. So this is actually showed the, 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 the how many customer count by each job category. So this is another way to look at the, the data distribution. So this is actually quite important to show that how important this job uh, the job. Uh, category yes this we specifically look at the data distribution for this attribute this is one way to look at attribute one way to look at a distribution this is another way to look at a distribution so okay so those are the, the some of the, the tool now I will spend the next probably uh, 10 minutes to show how we actually do this so so this is a actual example uh, you actually can do. Uh, I will show you. This is actually 
This example is in uh, uh, GitHub. So the, I have a link to show that this is called a one of the lab to use to, to, to show machine learning. So this, mach this example is to show to predict the customer credit score. So uh, they also actually do two models, customer credit score also customer uh, spending. So they were gonna predict uh, 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 for the particular customer, what's the credit score? Or for particular customer, how much buying power they can have. So this is based on this query, based on this table. Uh, this is a table. This table 100,000 row. This table has the, 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 the data we're gonna use to build a model has all the data, including the credit score. So we know this, each customer, what is the credit score. But uh, we're gonna use that data to train model so that while we have new customers in, in, we can base on some of the data here to predict their credit. So that is a, this example. And yeah, this, is, this example is in, in this GitHub. So, so in order to run a, a machine learning, there are two major phases. One is to prepare your data, understanding your data, understanding your data distribution, prepare your data for machine learning. After you finish uh, that, you can again build uh, the data model. Here's some, uh, some of the major phase on, major step of each phase. First, you prepare your data and understand the data. So for example, we just showed uh, we want to understand the data, data, data distribution, how important, uh, you know, for example, how many people are in good credit, how many people in bad credit. Then we're also going to find out that those attributes, most top, top in attribute that could relate to good credit. So for example, uh, the income, profession, uh, wealth, right, family. Then after that, we're going to split this data into two parts. One is called training data, one is called test data. Training data help us to build a model, test data help us to invite it to the accuracy of the model. So once we have this one, the second one, the second phase is we take the training data, we do some setting to show, to tell uh, the uh, procedure that which model, which algorithm you're gonna use, and, all, and also relate to the parameter for this algorithm. Then, the DBMS, uh, the, the data mining create model procedure will create a model and save that model in the table. Then, then after you create model, we're gonna invalidate how good this model is. We take the model, we take the test data to show. In importance in this text data, we use this model on the test data to calculate the, 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 the predicted credit. Then we use the predict credit to compare with the real credit to actually to show the difference. The difference is stored in this called lift result. And this lift result will, is a single indicator, indicator to show how good this model is. If, the good, if this showed model is good, then we, we are ready to use this model to do that for, for, for prediction for new data. So that is the process. So let, let's spend a few minutes Jump, finish the, the process. First, yeah, we just discussed, uh, we, we want to use, prepare the data. So understand the data, we use this pie to, to, to do it. Yeah, so this also show how many people are good credit and bad credit. So we want to understand the distribution. You will see <clears throat> not only the query is important, all the graphical interface is so critical for this model understanding, <coughs> excuse me. Then uh, some of the uh, data column, uh, some of the columns actually the uh, 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 continuous data like a credit, like for example, some, someone has credit like a 700, someone credit like 699. And uh, in order for machine learning to process, we have to put all those in a different bin. So for example, we treat the credit from 600 to 699 as the same, one, one bin. So we pretty much like, a, like in this case, we put a 10 bins. So each has a range. That's how the, it's important that for machine learning to understand because the machine learning right now uh, is built to process this uh, uh, bin, not by continuous number. Uh, yeah, so then after that, we can show the data by bin. So in this case, uh, each bin, each, uh, uh, when I, by each range, how many people are in each range. 
instead of showing each particular numbers. Then next thing is uh, we actually split. Uh, or we also want to, our uh, next step is to uh, understand uh, uh, what are top attribute. Uh, and this could be very uh, difficult for manually uh, look at it. But I think about this uh, Oracle already have uh, this pre built procedure called a DBMS predictive analysis procedure. Uh, the package, uh, inside the package, this called explain package, the procedure. That procedure will help us to and to find the top, top, uh, top uh, attributes and rank them. So this is actually, you just call this procedure, they will do it. And, and, and they put this rank into this bin table, into this, uh, the call, this table. Then once you finish that, you just need a long SQL query on this table. They're going to show, uh, um, this is actually probably the rank importance. The importance they show from top to, to small. So top for credit history, top one is wealth. How many people you have, how many money you have bank, that's the most critical one. And the profession and the income. And uh, yeah, so those are the top top attribute. And uh, we're gonna use those top attribute to do the machine, to mo the model building. Like for example, if you customer have attribute like uh, address, those probably will not be selected for machine learning uh, uh, bottom model building. Yeah, so you can just uh, select this table. Uh, this is one way to show, this is another way to show that. So by this table, so you can by, by, by the, the importance rank also by the rank, uh, uh, yeah, by rank also the, 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 the correlation, like how important this attribute is. Now then, after you select the attribute, we split this table into two, uh, you know, 60% in the training data and the rest of 40% in another test data. It is important that this data selection is random. You don't want to select people, all the people from one professional or one income bucket, like for example, 100,000. Uh, you don't want to do that because uh, if you just select those unrepresented data, uh, the, the, your model will not be accurate. So it's important to use the random. So this why is your random. Then after you select data, you can uh, setting, you do all the setting, including select which model and all the parameter and uh, which algorithm you use, the decision tree, that's something we're gonna use. Uh, and all the other, if we wanna set this, this uh, algorithm, you have uh, several parameters you have to set. It. So you, you can see that all this is done by, by the, by this, uh, inserted by table. So, the the single data structure for machine learning, you know, all, all mail is table. Then this is actually procedure to build data model, the uh, query model. So we we'll take that model, we we'll take the data. Data is here, and I also have Bing a setting. And once the model is built, the model is stored in the N one class one table. This actually is a table. And, uh, and the nice thing about it, if you have a table, which means as a data, database professional, we know we can export, import, we can move around, and uh, that's quite simple. Then, okay, so then after we build it, we're gonna show how good this table is, uh, the model is, we call this called apply model. So basically we take the test data and, and uh, we run this model against the test data, we, then we can, we can calculate the, the, the particular result. So then we use the particular result to compare with the real result. So we calculate this is called computer lift. So lift basically calculate the difference between your real result and your particular result. Particular result is from model. So in this case, by see the difference, we can see the, uh, uh, the how good your model is. So how, how do you evaluate the, the model? We use this called gain and lift chart. So here is the, the gain lift chart explanation. So if you don't do machine learning, you just randomly, this will be like a, a like a, a, a straight line. And uh, and, uh, and a real case is uh, is this blue line, uh, a green line. And the blue line is actually your model come up. So you want to see that this uh, model is more uh, close to the real. Uh, more curve you have is better. If you have less curve, that means your model simply not, that does not do anything, it's just random. So, so 
Here in this example, we show this equilibrium is actually a pretty good curve. It's very difficult to get 100%, uh, but it's actually a good result. So in this case, we know this, actually, if this data was like a flat line, that, that would be not good, not good, so. Okay, so once you have model, then we can basically uh, to show uh, to apply this model. So in this case, single query to apply model. So we have new data. We, we, we can use this model to predict it. So let's say if we have a 500 new new customer, then I can use this model to calculate the credit for each of these customer by using this query. Uh, this is a single query, but if you want to store that prediction in the table, you actually can create this table, create table as a selected. So this is actually the, this query is a fixed. So it's a part of a data mining procedure. And, uh, and uh, you can run this query in DW or in your regular Oracle database. So, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, so this basically show you, uh, this is a result show you for this particular customer, what is the probability of for, for this customer to be to have good credit. So this is 100%. This is actually quite important that if you have a credit card uh, application, uh, you know, uh, if customer apply the credit card, you want to know if what's the probability for this new customer uh, have good credit. So if you have 100%, then you have high confidence that uh, you can give them the credit card. You know, if you, if other customer, uh, I didn't score the whole, the down whole, whole whole data, but some of bottom one, um, uh, you have a 20 or 30 or even 40% uh, percent of, to be good credit, then you probably don't want it. So in your business, you probably will establish the, the threshold. Let's see, you know, anyone that has 70% probability, I'll give them credit card. Anything below 70, I'm not gonna give them credit card. So this is actually a uh, healthier business. And, uh, and also, <clears throat> This also can, uh, this query actually can, important thing is that we want to embed this query in the part of your application. So we, we don't just calculate this for, for fun. We, we want to have this query built inside database, inside your application. Let's say if you have credit proof of application. So you actually, your credit proof of application can actually uh, uh, embed this query into your application to calculate the probability. Then you have a business logical to see if this number is up to, is, is above 70%, then you give them, you, you have a business logical to prove uh, the credit, uh, credit card. If number is below to 70%, you reject the credit card. So, so in this case, this one, but this particular customer only 51%. So up to you whether or not you want to give them credit card or not, but at least uh, I have this, uh, capability to calculate the, 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 the probability uh, for this customer has a, uh, uh, have good, uh, good credit. So that is uh, the, the whole process to, to, to the, we use this example to show uh, how we build a uh, machine learning inside of, uh, autonomous database. So all this, all this example, as we discussed, this example is actually, you actually can try this example uh, our first, our, our thing first, you, you come here, uh, uh, try some more example. It's a little bit more simple. Then once you have enough information, then you can just come to this uh, GitHub, download this, uh, download this. This actually has uh, three labs. The from beginning, you actually have the low data and, uh, and the low data, because uh, this 100,000 data, uh, raw data is not in the AW. You have the you have the load data to the AW, uh, autonomous data warehouse, but all the all the code is actually here. So you have uh, three uh, lab one hundred, lab two hundred. Those are like uh, how you build a database, uh, autonomous database, uh, how you load data. Three hundred start with three hundred. You actually run in the the uh, you go through this example. So that's give you uh, uh, at least for learning curve. Well, obviously once you uh, learn that, you actually can. If you have the own your own business, you actually can start developing the machine learning uh, applications. So that is the one. Uh, uh, there's so much. That's uh, as much as I want. I want to cover cover that. There's actually quite a few uh, uh, reference because uh, this presentation actually talk cover several area. So I just want to highlight 
why is the Oracle machine learning inside database? So, so you can, you have all the algorithms inside database. And that part, you actually, if you want to try that, that part, actually, you don't have to come to autonomous database. You actually can try in your, in your regular Oracle database. All the algorithm is inside Oracle database. The algorithm we just show even in the example, all the algorithm is inside database. Only thing you don't have is, uh, is actually the, 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 the machine learning notebook. So if you want, you actually can get your own notebook, you connect to a database. That takes some work, but it's possible. But the uh, nice thing about the autonomous database is you don't have to build your own database. For learning purposes, quickly can maybe take you a few hours. Uh, you know, get a, you know maybe take the autonomous database house is like only building one database instance is like only ten minutes. Then after you know that you can start in, uh, uh, log into a machine learning and uh, run all the examples. So and uh, and uh, yeah, so rest of this is depend on machine autonomous database. But the top one you already uh, is part of Oracle. Oracle RDBMS 12C uh, 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 feature called advanced analytical uh, option features, which is part of uh, already part of Oracle database. So, <clears throat> yeah. So this is a if you want to know more, <clears throat> uh, definitely there are. <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of uh, uh, reference. I want to mention the Charlie Burger is actually the, the 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 senior director for this product. Uh, he has a lot of blogs you can read it and uh, and uh, and uh, the the moving data not moving operation not data that is uh, pretty much the the logo you know that uh, the, this whole tech uh, oracle machine learning uh, uh, um, feature uh, is about it. so yeah so that's uh, that's uh, all i want to cover and hopefully this uh, Give you the introduction about this new area. I know uh, the, the not many people actually uh, uh, because we all work on a database. Uh, the, the machine learning is kind of relatively new areas, and uh, but uh, th this gave us uh, uh, some introduction for us to further uh, explore. Myself is also on the path to further learning this piece. Okay, that's all I want to cover. And uh, thank you. And a uh, question, QA. Yeah, any questions? Uh, I, I will be very really happy to, to answer. Thank, thank you, Kai. Yes, we have three questions in the QA section. Please, could you check them? Okay, let's see how they do that QA section. Yes, yeah, okay. okay. Yes, the uh, first question is uh, machine learning is included in ATP. Yes, it is a part of ATP, but uh, uh, I have not covered that. It could be a little bit different. Uh, uh, myself, I, ha I actually have not explored that, but it is a part of ATP. Uh, another machine algorithm in all. Yeah, so I think uh, starting also Oracle 12C, uh, the 12C has uh, all the machine learning algorithm inside database. Oh, certification on autonomous database. Uh, I think they have some, uh, yeah, they do have some certification uh, called uh, an OCI. I know they have a cloud certification, but I'm not quite sure autonomous database, uh, definitely autonomous database is a part of a cloud certification, but I don't know if they actually have a specific uh, uh, certification for autonomous database. Uh, I, that's something I have to explore that. I, 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 I don't have a, uh, any uh, a definite answer for that. Yeah, but I know have OCI uh, uh, certifications. Yeah. Thank you, Kai. I think that's all the questions. Well, mm, th thank you, thank you, Kai, for your excellent presentation. I'm sure it has served served us a lot. Gracias, Kai, por tu excelente presentación. Estoy seguro que nos ha servido y ayudado muchísimo lo expuesto. Um, once again, thank you all for joining us, and we will finish the session. Thank you, Kai.
Thank you. Thank you. See, see you soon. Yeah, see you soon. That's something I really hope for. And uh, see you soon. Yeah. And uh, and I once again thank you for attending the session. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. See you next thank time. You. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye.